right, here we go. We're on. The midweek howl is recording. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Uh, so, miracles never cease around here. <laughs> um, so I was, uh, I started to tell you, and then we just decided, let's just record it. Um, because I, I think the other night, I, I don't know how many episodes we were talking talking about deer accidents, weren't we? Weren't we? Yeah, we did a couple weeks ago. So I told the story about the guy, uh, you went to the call where the deer got hit in one lane and went through the, yep, yep, yep. D- yep. Yeah. And I told mm-hmm. the story about the guy in the motorcycle. Yep. Uh, stay, so, um, gosh, what was it? Thursday night, um, Christy and Izzy were taking, Izzy got a new horse not too long ago. What kind of horse? Um, American quarter horse, you know, one that she's got rides and stuff. She raining, Listen, she roping, she barrel racing. What's she doing? Well, she ain't barrel racing or anything like that. She's, uh, you know, doing, um, oh, she's burning making, hay. That's what like she's Like West, doing. basically, yeah. That's it's what a high my do- brother would it, say. She's burning hay. A hay burn. It's a high dollar horse that uh, uh, Izzy's going to have have uh, some surgery here in a couple of weeks. So the horse take, is, or she is the horse. She Izzy, is. Horse is. Izzy okay. is having surgery. Okay. So, so we're taking the horse to a trainer near us. Okay. Because she ain't broke yet. No, she's broke, but she's, she's not about, kid broke. Oh, she is. Yeah, she's uh, broke everything. But Izzy's not gonna be able to do anything for a month or two. So we want her someplace where she's gonna get worked every day. Um, right. Okay. Okay. Because yeah, Izzy Izzy rode her in the Congress. Didn't we talk about that? Her right now. Probably. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so anyways, it was, uh, wherever they took it, it was down south of us near uh, Lexington, Ohio. And, um, so they, uh, dropped the horse off, came back. I, I think I might even have been recording another podcast episode or something. And Christy does pretty good with the trailer hooked up to the Suburban, but she can't quite back her in, in the driveway into the spot that we need it. So, we come in, she comes in, I, I go out there, and I and I walk back to kind of look, because, you know, look, and here, the tray, so it's a, it's an enclosed horse trailer, mm-hmm. and it's got on both sides big metal uh, wheel wells or whatever, wheel yep. coverings. Fenders, okay? yeah, I know what you're talking fenders, about. Fenders, yeah, fenders, okay. And I look, and the, <laughs> the fender on the driver's side front is just bashed in. Like, I mean, bad? Bad. Like, it's bad. Well, what are they in. made out of? Aren't they made out of steel or is steel. that aluminum trailer? What it is, is that? It is steel. The vendor's steel. It ain't aluminum. It's not aluminum. It's per, it's steel. Now, it's not like okay. two inch thick steel or anything, but it's steel. And it is, it is bashed like she hit a boulder with, the, with that fender, with that fender. And it bashed it in to where it's rubbing against the tire a little bit. And I looked at her and against I said, the tire, against it get hot and blow out. Against the tire. And I said, I said, what what happened? And she goes, Well, she goes, We were driving and, and I heard something. We heard something kind of thud, but she goes, I didn't think much of it. Well, and sure? she goes, she goes, yeah. we just kept going. And you got the look, and there's the hair sticking it. So, so a deer had run, had obviously run across the road, thinking the coast was clear because the suburban was passed, and ran right into the side of that trailer. Right. Then at the side of the trailer, it just crushed that wheel well. And I mean, I don't know how they drove. I mean, they were like 15 miles away still. And she drove it the whole way, and they didn't, you know, there was no place for them to stop right there anyway. But I got to thinking, like, if that deer was big enough to bash that in, if it had got under that tire on that trailer, it might have taken them right off the road. Well, I, I mean, doubt it, that, but, 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 I, 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 you, don't you think, know, you don't think it would have. Like if it got under that trailer and, and knocked it knocked it sideways no, or something. No, not if she just keeps it freaking this ain't a movie, man. Okay. <laughs> as long as you keep your wheels straight and don't jerk the wheel, that truck is gonna track straight. 
I mean, I've seen dudes run over spike strips, get tires blowed out. I've seen them going 90 mile an hour down the interstate with three on three rims and one tire. Okay. When, so in the movies, when, you know what I mean? When, when the tire blows out and it trips, that's because they blew it out with an explosive and that's part that was in the screenplay and they put a ramp there and tripped it. Okay. But just keep your stuff. But you know what that, it segued into something already. Okay. Right. <laughs> Did you see this week where they're talking about, they're talking about man in a mission to Mars, the international space station to Mars or whatever. Did you see that? Oh yeah. Yeah. And they said, they're going to put an all female crew on it. So there's no hanky panky up there. It can't be co-ed. Now I don't know why they can't just do it old school and have an all male crew, but I guess that went out with the eighties. So now we need females in space. Therefore we got to have all female crew. So there's no hanky panky. Okay. And I, that, you know, that segued into the comments where everybody would say Houston, we have a problem. Nope. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just like you hit some. I was hoping. No, we don't. I, no, we don't. When I went to, yeah, no, we don't. I know where I'm going. Let me get the map out. Hey, when you said, <laughs> I was thinking, my guy sure was a deer, not some homeless dude or some guy standing on the side of the road. Maybe we need to cut this podcast. She has rights, you know. Put the fifth. You don't need to say nothing. Well, it was the inside. It was the uh, it was it was the driver's side. So if it was somebody standing in the middle of the road, she missed him with the front of the suburban and got him with the trailer. So they got what they had coming. My gosh! Well, you know, I had water. Excuse me, running to the door. Excuse me, my super crew. I told you about a month ago. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what do you do? I mean, they're out there. I'm going to try to do my best, let my my son and a couple other kids shoot some more this weekend. So, you know, we're just, we're trying to thin the herd out. It just doesn't work. Uh, we need to, um, we need to thin the herd out around here. That's for sure. You, can't you guys are a shotgun only state though, right? No, no, you can bow hunt. The bow hunt's big. Yeah, okay. but you can't use a rifle. Oh, um. Oh God! What what is it? A uh... you got some goofy thing, nah, straight walled rifle cartridge or something? I mean, you can't go out there with all the heat they bring around here. Well, I'm not a hunter, so I don't know. I don't know all the technical terms. And now, and now, all our fans are being. I knew, you know, he didn't know what he's talking about. But I don't. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to guns. But um, like, what are you guys going out there with, like M16s and and gallon yeah, guns? Baby, so. mm -hmm. SBR suppressed short barrel rifles, mm -hmm. high capacity <laughs> wet magazines, you know, whatever trip wires, claymores. You know, I think you can. Snares. I think you can only hunt around here with like flintlock. So. Alternative weapons here in Missouri, we can use uh, lances. Uh, lance, lance, atlases. Yeah, you know, like an atlas. You know what an atlas is? We can use atlases, slingshots, air guns. What, what about? Uh, what, what is the chain? What is the ball with the spikes on the chain? Mace. Um, is that what it is? Is that a mace? mace. Yeah, Where you mace. swing it around? <laughs> swing it mace. Around. Hey, I got a buddy of mine that's killed uh, 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 several hogs and one deer with a knife. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, would love to get him, I would love to get him on the <laughs> on the mic here, but I don't know. How? First okay. of all, probably have to be a Patreon. For a second, I don't think he'll do it, right? Because <laughs> okay, because we'll have to ask him. See if he'll come on. We'll have him for the December Patreon. Because I got to hear. How do you kill a hog? One of those wild hogs with a knife? Well, ask my son. He'll tell you. Um, and both either of my sons, they've killed hogs with no, a knife. But I've killed some stuff with a big old knife, and they. I, I was driving across Wyoming. Now, this might put some fans off, so if y'all are weak, yeah. hang up now and go back to watching the Patriots play. Because <laughs> Patriots played th Patriots played Thursday, so go back. This is going to get real. This is going to get real. Okay, okay. All right, let's get real. <laughs> Me and my youngest boy in the fall of 2017. I don't think I got a uh, mute button. I'm not good enough with it on the on the yawn. I think it was the fall of 2017, so he would have all been all of nine, eight or nine. We were out in Wyoming, north of Gillette, Wyoming, off of Highway 59. I had this old 
Tahoe, off-road Tahoe while I was driving around. We were out there antelope season. We had a console full of antelope tags, buck in, antlerless. And there's a big piece of, piece of state ground, which you can hunt on, just right along the highway. Now, we had went past it earlier in the morning. We're coming back. I don't know what we were driving. To t- and I looked over, and these antelope, when they left against the side of the road, uh, on these hillsides, sometimes they look like limestone. You know, they got white bellies and, and white points, and sometimes they'll just look like rocks. So I told my son, Charlie, I said, hey, there's two deer, or two antelope right there. And he goes, where? And I said, right there. And he goes, no, they're rocks. And I pulled over. And when I pulled over, he got the binoculars to start looking. And I was getting my rifle out. And he said, really? And I said, watch this. So <clears throat> I snuck over there. Well, in Wyoming, you've got, if there's a fence by law, you can't shoot from the road. If there's a fence, you have to cross it. If there's a ditch, you have to cross it. If there's not a fence or a ditch, you got to be, I don't remember, 45 or 55 feet from the road. But there was a fence, a real fancy, like six bar, six wire fence so i get over there and they're i don't know 100 i don't know how far they're 150 175 yards away but there was a um like a stock tank in a in a like a well house in a switch there was some action and almost like a corral area where they had built the fence around this um well house in 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 junction of some sort i guess to keep the cattle from going up there and rubbing on it or what you know what i mean it wasn't to fence yeah. anything it was to fence them out so once i got across the fence on my belly um they kind of got spooked it was a big doe and a little doe and uh I, I made it to this fence post on the inside of the fence where i had a good rest and i jumped up and <clears throat> laid across the top of this fence i don't remember what it was 175 i don't i didn't even i didn't even range it because i thought it's close enough and and as soon as i put my gun up there and started looking through the scope she jumped up to take off running you know what i mean to, to they figured something was up yeah so i started throwing the lead at him and i hit her right off the bat and uh but she got back up and then as soon as i shot her and i realized i hit her i transitioned to the other one and when I shot her, that second one dropped. The first one circled back like to get her. And then I shot again and she ended up dropping right there. So I tell my son, let's go, you know, buddy, come on. So he's crawling out, you know, he's all oh, man, dad, that was so cool. I thought they were going to get away. And I said, you know, son, <laughs> they just don't get away. You know, they just don't, they just don't. I mean, rarely do they get away from for me right you know are we mean? talking okay well, are we talking about deer or is this your college whatever your co- whatever your college de- <laughs> whatever they just don't get away because the government has spent a lot of money in 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 training me to put rounds down range so some unarmed antelope at 175 yards is gonna have a tough row you know what i mean if she doesn't hit the turbo right off the bat but as we get up there she jumps up and I, and and she was she was her back legs were were partially immobile anyway she was alive enough to get up and start hobbling away but too broken down to get away well i don't remember if i didn't want to shoot i don't know why maybe i just did it to impress him then which is what i did on my second boy on the second story so i had this big old knife like rambo style knife in my pack here and i said give me that knife he goes what he shoot it again daddy i said i ain't gonna shoot it up here this close and and i ran up to her with that big knife and and you know when you watch like the last kingdom or something ridley scott's you know uh uh robin hood or whatever and and they make stabbing something look very easy you know what i mean yeah oh yeah yeah well if you've got a good knife and you're very stout at all it is. <laughs> so I walked up there and got it beside her, and I just 
stuck her behind the front shoulder as she's trying to walk away from me and and that knife went to the hilt just just, just like cutting butter or something i mean just poof. so and he still talks about this to this day and it was what, four or five years ago so fast forward in 2000 my son come my oldest son come back from germany and i had put in for antelope tags in wyoming so it was me and him and we went out through colorado we made a week journey of, of of going through the mountains and ended back up at the same place me and this me and my younger son had killed his antelope but about three miles four miles up the road and there's an antelope bear he'd never shot one he'd actually missed one that morning that i won't talk about that was 35 yards away <laughs> looking right at us that was you know that you could have got with one of those maces I probably could have got it with a base with a rock. I don't know. You know, I, I probably could have, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I probably could have, cause I set it up as an ambush. Cause I seen where I was going. I probably could have crawled up there and counted coup, you know, like the, the natives. I could have touched it for extra points and let it get away. <laughs> but I stopped short of that. I told my son, get up on the sticks. It's going to come around this hillside, kind of a butte, not really a mountain, but it's going to come around. It's going to jump that fence right there on that path because this there's something behind us it wants to get to. You know what I mean? And he won't see us till he gets right there, and then you shoot it. Oh, I can't see Daddy. There's some brush. There's this. So I got to move two or three times. The next thing you know, this thing's on us, jumps the fence, and he locks up and looks right at us. Big old ears forward like a mule or something looking right at us. And my son sitting there on the sticks, and I don't want to badmouth him because he's just he is deployed in the in the armed forces of the United States. So theoretically, our freedom in this country relies on young men like him, right? But not to shoot antelope at thirty five years. Uh, yeah, be glad he's not feeding the country or the wagon train or whatever, because at thirty five yards with this big old scope, bolt action, Remington seven hundred. Stainless steel, 24-inch button rifle, stainless barrel. He touched that thing off, and the only thing that antelope did was was go back the other way. So I said, where was you at on the scope? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, I was he was I was on him. I said, oh, you what? <laughs> he didn't poleaxed him, so he was down in the dumps. It is only that he was never going to get another chance. I told him he would get another chance in a little bit. So sure enough. big old section like you know what a section 660 acres square so there's a place where there's there's essentially five of them in a row there are five of them together so there's there's two it's too deep five sections to get man that's yeah. huge so so two so so there's two miles mm -hmm. deep or two miles wide and and the one on the left is if you're standing at the corner of them where they three meet, miles, three miles, one's deep. three miles, one's two miles. Yeah. And there's a county road that goes up beside the one edge of it. And then there's a wildlife road that goes through the middle with a gate and see, they run cattle out. Anyway, I seen as we're coming around this corner, there were some out of state hunters from New York or Ohio, Pennsylvania, something that were pushing up this gully. So by the time we get around the top, we just drive. I'm just going to go past it because I figured these dudes are hunting that section. You know, I ain't going to walk out there, go out there. And and we get a mile, mile and a half away, and at the top of this hill, these antelope, this big buck is coming out of this draw where those guys are a mile away down the bottom of it. You with me? Yep. So I said, there's one right there, son. I pulled over at that gate and get the rifle out. He says, my, I want to shoot that. I said, okay. I said... <clears throat> And this thing's 175, 200 yards away trotting. Now, this is a kid that just missed one standing still at 35 yards, right? So I said, I don't know. And I've got the rifle. And he goes, no, Daddy, come on. I can do it. I can do it. I said, okay, lean over this post. I'm going to turn the scope up about five. And 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 I said, all you got to do is put the crosshairs on his shoulder. You're going to keep have to keep swinging just like your trap shotgun. And buds. I'm trying to give him a pep talk. Kapow. Well, he hits a little too far back. He does a little flip, but he gets back up. I said, hit him again. You know, so I got hitting me. So we've got this run and gun battle with this damn antelope. Pow, pow. You know, this kid is, is throwing lead. So this thing finally, I don't know if it just got exhausted or it was carrying so much lead it couldn't carry anymore, but it was down. It sat down on its, in, like a big dog would. You know what I mean? Really? Just sit, okay. Yes. Just sit right there with the head up, swinging around. 
And another thing, there's a stock tank of water and like a little, uh, you know, some like cedar. The only trees in that whole five sections, it was like I, we're growing around. One time, maybe there was an old barn or home place of some sort. So I opened the fence and I told him, I said, hey, come over on this side. And I said, we're going to walk right down there. With we're going to keep this power line and that stock tank and that that little that little pine tree between us, so he can't see back. He can't see us sneaking up on him. You know what I mean? So we 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 sneak 100 and I don't know 100 200 yards down there to where when we step out around this tank and he flips up and looks at us, he's 50 yards away, and he wants to get up. And I told my son, I said, and I got these big fancy. $140 shooting sticks. I put them sticks down there and I said, shoot him right in the neck. My son lays up there, kapow! Misses him. I said, well, shoot him. <laughs> I said, that's okay. Just shoot him through the shoulder. Well, I ain't got no shells no more. And the rest of the shells are up there in the truck. So I said, what? I'll run back and get some more. I said, no, here, give me that knife. Because I had give him this big knife. I had went to Walmart. I used to be a bad Walmart shopper. I'm still a Walmart walker, but I try not to buy too much there, right? So in Minnesota, I'd walk down these sale aisles. You know the sale aisle at Walmart? Well, I walked through there one day, and they had these big, I think they're buck and charade maybe, but these big 10, 12-inch, just crazy knives, right? Just giant, no, like a Bowie knife almost. No rational person, I call it Rambo knife. No rational person would use it hunting or anything. But they were like five or six bucks. And I bought one from my oldest boy. And then I thought, well, so I ended up buying one for each of my kids. So they had one, you know what I mean? Even my daughter. So at the end of the world comes, they all got this big ass knife. So he was carrying this big old knife on his belt like he was Davy Crockett or something. And I said, now he just missed this deer. He shot it four or five times with 30 odd six. Shot around it anyway. At least he didn't come on. I said, give me that knife. And he goes, are you serious? And I said, yeah. And as I pulled that knife out, I started walking up there. And what was in the back of my head was my little, my youngest boy was so impressed about me. You know what I mean? He still talks about me killing that one with a knife. And he said, well, what are you, what about his horns? And as he started saying, what about his horns? I got up there and stuck him. And I said, that's it. Well, what do you, I said, you watch. Wasn't, you know, 15, 20 seconds, the soul antelope just fell over dead. <clears throat> and he's just like, what? Can I have that knife? I said, yeah, it's yours. It ain't my knife, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you are essentially Rambo. So then I told my son, I said, here, give me the leave the knife. Here. I said, hurry up and go get my pickup. Open that gate. Get that, bring that truck down here. So these guys pushing that draw that's been hunting this thing and working their ass off don't see that we just pulled up there and shot their antelope. And he ran up there and he, what are we going to do? I said, put it in the truck and we're going to go take it somewhere else to clean it so they don't watch. And that's what we did. Got it out of that Dodge. Oh, good. Well, yeah. what, made, what I immediately thought of when you started talking about the knife was, and this is like totally taking a left turn. But what about those kids? What about those kids in Idaho? Was it Idaho that got, all got stabbed in their sleep? Uh, you know, uh, yes. I don't know. Were they sleeping or partying? They were sleeping. They were all in bed sleeping. Oh, I didn't I, know that. I never. I purposely haven't read anything about it. It's upset. You know, I got my well, my my wife is was just all over that story for watching, and it still freaks her out a little bit. And I was wondering, okay, did one of the other ones do it and then no. stab themselves? They have. Oh, well, hmm. you know what I mean? Well, so the dead person is actually there. Well, they and said they whoever who, they said whoever it was uh, went in through a open sliding door, went past the two roommates on the bottom floor, went upstairs and stabbed each one of those people in their bed. So why did they leave the bottom ones alive then? I have no idea. They they almost how do they know like, they didn't do it? Uh, they've been cleared apparently. They've been they cleared. tell them that you get them to open their mouth so that they can frame them up. You're never clear. You think that? Well, you yeah. would know. On oh, dude, you, you watch Yellowstone. They're gonna take them to the train. Well, station. now wait a They're second. Like, One minute you told me I can't <laughs> take them to the train. One minute you tell me I can't watch what's on TV and believe it because it's 
explosive set underneath the car, and now you're telling me I'm supposed to believe what I'm seeing. I think that's the thing. You just don't know what to believe. You've got to use your, use your, you know what I mean? God, not only did he give you an opposable thumb to separate you from the primates, he theoretically gave you the idea, uh, the ability to reason. You know, but why is why does some people, why is it so much different? Some people just have no ability to reason, and some have great ability to read. You know, that's just kind of... Some people are just lucky. Just a sense of humor? You got a sense of humor? No, that they don't know anything. I mean, think about the dumb people in this world get along a hell of a lot better than the smart people. <laughs> that's true. That's yeah, I true. mean, come on. <laughs> um, I... and, and you said Yellowstone. You know, I don't... You you haven't really started to watch that, have you? I, no, off and on. My old lady watches it. She's been she started from scratch a couple weeks ago, and she's almost she tried to get through every one of them. You know what I mean? So it was hard for me. Like Chrissy and I watched the last couple year, years before. I think we watched part of life. Anyway, those episodes are so heavy. They're real heavy. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff to unpack. Just like Sam em- Elliott said, a lot of drama. That's why he didn't watch it. Very emo, yeah. And he, well, his, the one he was in, 1883, was great. But mm-hmm. uh, I'm really not, I'm really starting to not like that Beth Dutton. Now, oh, lady, that's my favorite one. Well, she's British anyway, so she's not American. Is she, well, she's, she's great. Irish British. Yeah, oh, no. She's that's great my favorite actor. one in the whole thing. You she's mean because she's crazy? Or, or uh, mean or what? It, yeah, she's, I mean... She's not very she's not endearing. A, she's not a saying? good person. Oh, that's part of it. She's like a wild Mustang out there. She just needs the right guy. Like Rip is the right guy to break her. Okay, so if you can't ride, you can't saddle. Don't even worry about saddling up that one. See, that's <laughs> the deal. You know? I just don't. I don't like. Um, man, it's her scenes with the uh, the dude that plays her her brother. That's not really her brother, Jamie. Yeah, that's some brutal stuff. Like the new, like this year's stuff. She never so shuts up about it, does she? No, and and so, and I get you know if this is a spoiler or say you know I don't it is what it is, but you know she she basically made him kill his real dad. Did you see that at the end of last? No, season? what are you talking about? I don't even know where you're even. You mean Kevin Costner's not his real dad? No. No, 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 no. He's adopted. He got his real dad went to prison. Okay, not real. Jamie, you're talking about Jamie, the one that's the attorney general. Okay, yes. So his real dad was in prison. And I forget for what. And so Kevin and I, the, maybe the mom died. See that I didn't see the first couple years, so I don't know how those flashbacks work or whatever but anyways we can't you come to figure, find out that he's adopted he's not really the blood you know the kevin costner basically that makes sense him yeah. that makes sense okay. and it's kevin costner said yeah that makes and sense. so and so at some point and i've missed this point but i've picked up on it beth must have got pregnant at a younger age and i believe probably by rip okay probably yeah mm-hmm. and had an abortion, right? And Jamie took her to have it, and the clinic that he took her to basically butchered her. And, and now she's she can't like, have kids. Can't have kids. So she has. Dude, that's heavy. I, yeah. well, how did we get on this? That's too heavy for me. So, so she. That's why is, she's so bitter. Oh yes. So in the end of last season, um, so Jamie's real dad gets out of prison finally, and is starting to. Show up, show up. He does show up, and he and he he's starting to wriggle his way back into Jamie's life. And long story short, she basically makes. It, I think Jamie's real dad might have had something to do with uh, an attempt on all their lives or something. Um, but either way, um, she makes Jamie kill him, and then take him to the train station. <laughs> Take him to the train station or whatever. So she ba- so, and she just says, look, I own you now forever. I, I just own you forever. Don't even look at me cross-eyed because you, I will. So this is what I, you know, some yep. of the people I follow on Twitter are real cowboys. Mm-hmm. And they always make fun of the fact that he's got a ranch the size of 
Rhode Island, he's only got about 40 cows on it, but he's got 11 hands for 40 cows. And I, well, I think I, he's I, got more. I think he's got more than that. That's just what this show. But, but all the crime stuff, it's like junior NCIS that have them all in jail the next day. No. Well, you know I, mean? I think it's a, just crazy. Think, Some of the stuff just. Aren't a lot of those cowboys, though, transient? That end up disappearing, like the some of the people. They've... I guess I don't know. You, you know, it just it's just there's just a lot of craziness. That's all I can say. It's just a lot of craziness. Well, the, and the money, you know, you think the money the money must uh, insulate kind of like those uh, the dude the dudes from South Carolina, the Murdochs that thought they were getting away with killing every the guy, you know, killed his son and his wife and killed a housekeeper or whoever else, and he's finally you know going to fry for it, maybe or maybe or maybe somebody's setting him up you think they're setting him up i don't know <laughs> well he claims i heard he claims he has a alibi that uh, he probably he couldn't does have, couldn't have killed his son and he couldn't have killed his wife because he was on the road when he left them and uh, they said he made like 15 phone calls and he made uh, phone calls too well the different you know his his brother is you know, different other, his dad, maybe, and so just a bunch of people, but he's just like, look, I, I, how could I have just got on, on the, on the road and just made all these phone calls if I had just killed somebody? And what did they tell him? Uh, that's they your talent. Him. That's why you bill 300 an hour. <laughs> that's why you're, you're a psychopath. Of course you could, of course you could do that. <laughs> you mean he's saying how intellectually he, how you could do it? <clears throat> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Like he is saying, how could somebody kill somebody, his his wife and his kid, get in his car and just leisurely take a drive and call people and just talk? You know, I like think, that's you know, just crazy. Maybe somebody killed somebody wrong song needs to come out. God. Oh gosh. Oh, that's a oh geez. Um Somebody done somebody wrong. So what? Who's that? Can yeah, it is. Don't you remember Linda Ronstadt? No, it's, it's just. Uh, an, I sounds right. Just another somebody done somebody wrong song, right? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what yeah. it says, right? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, uh-huh. I do. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, well, the, right. I think. Hey, look, I'm not gonna lie. I think the world needs more songs like that. Well, we certainly need more of something. I don't know if that's what it is, but. We need something, you know. We need um, something. Um, uh, so, so of course, it's we're starting to ramp up here at the uh, post office with packages. All right, because uh, we got through Cyber Monday, but uh, people are just now sending them. Oh God, I don't know. It's I, I've got mixed emotions here because our little town, Amazon, has decided they're they got trucks in our town. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And so. I'm delivering. I'm like 50 packages less than this time last year, but there's still still got a lot of crap. Okay, but I kid you not. I walked walked into the post office to my mail case there, and uh, bet you know people will buy these big boxes of crap from Bath and Body Works. Okay, and it's full of that soap and spray and whatever. So it smells good in there. It does, and but. They're they're terribly packed. Okay, they just take a box and they just they don't put any packing material really in it, and they just you talking Amazon or normal people? Just I'm talking Bed Bath and Bed Bath and Body Works. Okay, Bath mm-hmm. and Body Works. There, people will buy directly from them, and they don't really put any packing um, in with it. All right, right. So a That's lot of those bo- a lot of those boxes. Will get cru- will get crushed a little bit, and something inside of it will bust and leak. Okay, so apparently along the route before it got to the post office, one of these boxes did just that. And the solution at whatever post, whatever step along the way was, they took all the stuff out and put it in a big clear plastic bag, cut. The cardboard with the little piece of the mailing label on, and and tape that to the clear plastic bag. Wrapped a like a tie around the top of the bag, 
and uh, that's how they finish. It finished coming to me, and then I took it to the customer. A big clear plastic bag. And what did they say when you dropped that off to them? I didn't uh, ring the doorbell to ask. <laughs> well, what am I gonna say? <laughs> what am I gonna say? I'm like, I no, this, is, this takes the cake. And the same day, you know what else I got? I got just a forty pound bag of dog food with a mail in label. Wasn't even in a box, nothing. Just a big bag of dog food with a mailing label on it. And that was it. Sounds like me, you need to welcome that Amazon truck. It's less stuff for you to pack. <laughs> well, the place that got the dog food also got four of the boxes of dog food. And as I was putting, I mean, so the other boxes were 50 pounds. So I'm low, I'm stacking up these. I backed up to the house. You know, I, I'm picking, I've already picked them up twice to get them into the, uh, you know, into the, from the, my route, my uh, case into the truck. And I'm, you know, so I'm just about done with them. Here come, here pulls up a UPS truck up the curb. And this time of year, they got they what they call them uh, jumpers. You know, they got their help. And out jumps this uh, hillbilly girl that's helping this guy that I know running around. And she has a box that's uh, maybe a matchbox car was in. And she walks it up and she's just laughing as I throw the last box of 50 pound dog food. And she sets that little box on top of this. <laughs> boxes of dog food she goes she goes uh you know so and so there he she goes he's laughing his butt off saying that we should have had the dog food and you should have had this and i go i didn't see him getting out to help me <laughs> you know like it was just ridiculous you know obviously they should have had the dog food because i the box she gave was big enough for me, for me to put in the mailbox i think but, people should uh just buy their dog food local uh, well, it wouldn't be so bad, except that the, uh, the old guy that lives there, he's a truck driver. So he's there every, you know, every now and then, but he, he came out as I was loading those out one time, cause I get five boxes every month. And, uh, he goes, I don't know why we keep getting this. He goes, we got 11 boxes in the garage that we haven't even opened up. Of dog food? Of dog food. They got an auto bill or something? Auto, auto shift. Sh auto shift. <laughs> it's your credit card keeps working, old timer. Yeah. That's why you still get it. <laughs> I was like, right? yeah. yeah. So, so uh, I'm just telling everybody who's listening, especially that lives in the United States, you know, take care of your mailman. Get, give them some cookies, give them some candy, $10 gift certificate to McDonald's. If I give them some help. Give them some help, whatever. It's it's rough. It's rough out there. <laughs> Sounds like it. I'm terrible. But I will tell you the the people that I deliver the dog food they don't they don't ever give me anything for Christmas. So no. they don't care. So it's a bad back. That's what they give me is a bad back. Well, so so in other words, you. so in other words, my uh my uh, mail truck that whole day had the intoxicating aroma of uh you know uh. Ocean Breeze, uh, Bath and Body Works soap, and Old Roy dog food. It was it was awesome. That was quite a quite a combination. Well, <laughs> I guess it could be worse. I real look. I really don't know how, but I'll take your word for it. You could have had one of the people they send you now for instead of a colonoscopy, they send you a stool sample thing with a box. And you just you put this cellophane thing over the toilet and you take a dump in it and ship it to them. So. <laughs> yep, it's called the mailing shit. Mm -hmm. You just, I mean, you send it into them. It's in a prepackaged label. You stick it on outside the box and you send it to them. Somehow they look through it. Did you, did you see, say the mail and ship, or, or the whichever, <laughs> whichever your ears want it to be, man. Wouldn't that be the other other way around? Shipping shit. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. <laughs> Go!